stainless steel versus carbon steel for survival knives. Let's talk about that. I wanted to title this video, Stainless Steel Survival Knife? Are you gay? <laughs> I figured somebody would just find that too offensive, though. So, we'll just mention it here. I'm not a fan of stainless steel when it comes to survival knives, or really any knife. Stainless steels have come a long way in the last 30 years or so, but every time I've ever tried to use a uh, stainless steel knife for survival-related tasks, I end up kind of getting let down. And most of that has to do with the stuff that they're adding to the mix to make it stainless makes the knife less durable and the edge more chippy. And... It's just not my preference. I prefer carbon steel on a survival knife or most knives because you get a really good edge. The steel is relatively affordable. It's carbon steel, so if you had to, you can hit it with a rock and get sparks. That's kind of a lesser concern, but it is something. Like, if you have no other way to start a fire or whatever and can find something that'll take sparks off of a carbon steel implement and find a rock to hit it with well it could get you out of a pinch your likelihood of doing that in the woods probably pretty slim that's because basically there's only two or three things that can take a spark off of a knife and start a fire and it's like char cloth tender fungus and uh, that's that's about it charred wood maybe I've done that before but in general that's kind of an overrated thing the only place that I'd be like man I wish my knife was stainless was if I was like in the ocean for some reason like a dive knife or some sort of tropical island survival but I don't see that really happening in my future so I'm not overly worried about that. If you are, maybe you should get a stainless knife. But realistically, even then, it's not that hard to keep a blade from rusting. Well, in a survival situation, I won't have oil or you know, steel wool or anything like that. How do you expect me to keep my knife clean? Well, depending on where you are, like again, if you're near the ocean, shit rusts just looking at it, basically. So, do whatever you want to do there. But when it comes to the other 99% of scenarios, it's not that big a concern. It's not like carbon steel just instantly rusts. And honestly, stainless steel can rust too, depending on what it is. Some definitely do it less than others, but most of the modern super steels don't really make that good of a fixed blade knife because of the wood processing stuff that you're gonna be doing with that knife and the flex and shit that the knife gets while doing that. I've had several knives where, you know, it's a reputable maker, it's a high-end stainless steel, and oops, first time we're batoning with it, it takes a chunk out of the blade the size of my thumb. That's pretty common with stainless steels. How <coughs> I'm sorry. How common is that with the newer, higher end stainless steels? Like Magna Cut or something? I don't know. I've not used that. But it would be my main concern about buying one of those blades and doing survival bushcraft type tasks with it. And you'll find with people that, you know, generally know what they're doing with this sort of thing. They like carbon steel. It's worked for the last hundred years. It continues to just work. The other, you know, consideration here for me is, you know, 
a carbon steel knife that'll do the shit that you need it to do is 100, 150 bucks. How much is a uh, magna cut blade from somebody like Essie? Like two or three hundred dollars. And it's one that's like this fucking big. Okay, well, yeah. It gets to be cost prohibitive. And if you have a tool that costs way less that'll do that same job, maybe even do it better. Why are you wasting money on other shit? You have other stuff to buy. You know, backpacks, saws, medical kits, food. A survival kit is more than just a knife. And a lot of people get really focused in on the knives because they're the cool part. And everybody, you know, saw Rambo or whatever and they want a knife that they can just run out in the woods and that's their only thing they have with them and now they can survive. I'm guilty of that too. But at the same time, if it's your only tool... (laughs) Do you want a tool that could break or do you want a tool that has a lineage going back to the 1800s of not breaking? I don't know. I'd pick the carbon steel every time. Like 1095 high carbon, 5160, 52100. These are good steels. An S30V survival knife or a Magna Cut survival knife is not suboptimal in my opinion and if that's what you want to do just know that if you try to take it through a big knotty log there's a reasonable chance that you might lose that tool and if you're like well I don't do that sort of shit anyway that's why I carry an axe well okay that's a reasonable answer but at the same time I like a tool that can do those things Is it 100% necessary? No, there's always ways around everything, but just in my experience, having a knife that can do more instead of less is generally speaking a good idea. Right now I'm actually ordering a uh, stainless knife that is for my EDC, that's sort of a survival knife, but because it's an EDC blade, first and foremost, I don't really mind it being stainless. The only reason it's stainless is because the guy who makes it wouldn't fucking make it in carbon for me. Bastard. But I've been really wanting one of these knives, so we'll see. It's in Nitro V, which I've never played with before, so there's another reason to try something new. Who knows, maybe uh, I'll find something I actually like. But if you're looking for, hey, I don't have a lot of money and I'm trying to buy all of this shit so I'm prepared for the end of the world. Or I'm trying to build a survival kit to go in my bush plane in Alaska or in my car. Just buy a carbon steel knife. And my recommendation there would be to buy a carbon steel mora of some sort and some sort of bigger blade that you like in carbon steel whether that's something from like the Pathfinder knife shop or SE or a custom maker even if you wanted to go that route there's lots of choices on the market and there's lots of good ones Um, I tend to like Scandi ground knives I tend to like convex ground knives but any knife can work basically at the end of the day all you need is a cutting edge and if you want to go out and buy a buck knife you know it's not the worst knife in the world you know there's plenty of shit worse than that but at the same time is it the most optimal tool for the thing you want to do probably not but then again like the buck special has been a pretty staple woods knife in America for a long time. But something like that is more of a hunting knife than a survival knife. You know, 
survival knives tend to have uh, more robust grinds on them, tend to be in a blade shape that's more utilitarian and can do a lot of things well. Hunting knives tend to be some sort of Skinner pattern or something like that buck knife where it's, you know, got a big buoy sweep to it that you probably don't need. You know, the buoy sweep is cool, but at the same time, if you have something like a, uh, a clip point or a drop point, you have more metal behind the edge and you're less likely to break the knife. The same goes for the grind on something like a buck knife. Um, most of them are hollow ground. And hollow grinding is good at some things and bad at others, but what you're guaranteed no matter what is that it's pretty thin behind the edge. And the likelihood of something like that to chip or roll or break just becomes a lot higher. There's a lot of people on YouTube that'll do survival knife reviews or top 10 survival knives. Go watch some of those. See the brands that they suggest. But I would avoid stainless steel and I would avoid anything super expensive. And I would avoid anything with the word survival in the name. Not everything with survival in the name is kind of gimmicky, but it's probably getting there. And I would avoid bushcraft knives pretty much altogether. Unless you are a bushcrafter, then you do whatever you want to do, but... For the most part, bushcraft knives are a little thin, a little tiny, and uh, not what I would want in a survival knife. Anyway, don't buy stainless blades. I'll see you guys later.